The Melba Story. The story of Australia's most famous woman. The true story, fully authenticated, and featuring another wonderful Australian singer, Glenda Raymond. The Melba Story. By the year 1893, Melba had conquered in four of the great cities of Europe, Brussels, Paris, London, and St. Petersburg. But one great European stronghold remained, perhaps the most difficult of all, Milan. When Melba arrived in that city, she was greeted by a flood of threatening letters. And when she made her first appearance at the La Scala Opera House, she found that most of the audience had turned their backs on her. So beautiful was her singing, however, and so compelling her performance, that within a few minutes she had completely captured the audience. Next morning at rehearsal, the Australian singer was feeling very much happier and gave a cheerful greeting to her secretary, Louis Bennett. Good morning, Louis. Any letters this morning? Yes. What's the matter, Louis? I don't think you'd better read them. More of the same kind. Worse. Much worse. Show me. Oh, all right. But you'll be sorry. If you stay in Milan, you had better be careful of the food you eat. Louis! My breakfast could have been poisoned. No, it wasn't. I went down to the kitchen and prepared it myself. Oh, Louis, you're wonderful. Give me another of those horrible letters. There you are. Hotels have been burnt down before today. Hmm. That's a pleasant thought, isn't it? And we're on the fourth floor. Listen to this one. Lifts can be tampered with. If you want to stay alive, use the stairs. You can see what they're trying to do, can't you? It's all part of a campaign meant to break your nerve. They won't do it, Louis. I beat them last night and I'll do it again. Oh, but surely all the letters aren't like these? No. Uh, there's one here from Mr. Tosti. He says he'll be at Venice... Uh, Madame Melba? Yes? Will you try the aria from the daughter of the regiment now? Yes, as soon as you're ready. Uh, stand over here, please. Here? That will do, thank you. Look out, Nelly! Oh! 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 What happened? I can't wait the bell from up there. It missed you by no more than a foot. Nelly! Nelly, are you all right? Yes, Louis. But it was a pretty close thing. If that piece of iron had landed on my head, you talk about it. A most unfortunate accident, madame. But all ended well. Are you sure it was an accident? Why, madame, what do you mean? I've had quite a lot of threatening letters. How do I know this wasn't an attempt to kill me? At La Scala? Oh, no, unthinkable. Well, I hope it is unthinkable. You'd better come back to the hotel. Back to the hotel? I came here to rehearse. But after this, you just couldn't see, wouldn't I? You'll see. Is the orchestra ready? The gentleman. The gentleman. Madame is about to sing the aria, Lodice Onion. Oh, Nelly, do you think you should? I know I should, Louis. If only to show them that I can't be scared.
Madame. You don't sound very pleased. Well, we are used to good voices at La Scala. If you want me, I'll be in my bedroom. Nellie, there's a young man asking for you. He won't give me his name, but he says it's most important. That very good-looking boy over there? Yes. He speaks almost perfect English, too. I think he must belong to some very good Italian family. All right, Louis. Call him over. Will you come this way, please? Thank you. Well, my friend, why are you looking at me like that? Because you are so beautiful. What? Even more beautiful than I thought. You are an angel. <laughs> Indeed, I'm not, am I, Louis? I think perhaps this gentleman had better tell you why he was so anxious to see you. You haven't much time to spare, you know. No, that's true. Hadn't you better come to the point, young man? I must speak to you. Alone. I'm afraid that's impossible. Uh, Madame can spare you just one more minute. Uh, what is your name? Who are you? It is enough that you call me Giovanni. I'll do nothing of the kind. What do you want? Only to stay with you. Stay with me? Oh, what do you mean? I adore you. This way out, please. No, wait. You must not send me away. I'm afraid I haven't the time to listen to any more of that sort of nonsense. Nonsense? The voice of my heart? You really must go. No. If you don't, I'll have you removed by force. Yes, Louis. Send for someone. Be careful. I am a dangerous man. And I swear to you that if you spurn my love, blood will flow. A few moments we'll return to the Melba story. The Melba story. Threatening me, my friend? I simply tell you what will happen if you send me away. 
Blood will flow, you say. Whose blood? Mine? That will be seen. Oh, I'll get someone to throw him out, Nellie. Yes, and Louis, you'd better ask for police protection. This young man appears to be half crazy. Yes, half crazy with love. Don't be ridiculous. Are you going? If you command me. I do. When can I see you again? Never. Oh, Unless you promise to let me come back, I will not move an inch. I'll soon find someone to make him move. I'm sure that won't be necessary, Louis. The young man's far too intelligent to cause a scene. You will let me see you again? Well, perhaps. May I kiss your hand? Oh, if you like. Now I am happy. Please, you must go now. Very well. But we shall meet again, my beloved. Oh, not if I can help it. Would you ever have thought it possible? <laughs> Since I left Australia, Louis, I've come to believe that anything's possible. Threatening letters, suspicious accidents, romantic declarations. Even an invitation from the great Giuseppe Verdi to sing at his home for aged musicians. Oh, that's the sanest thing of all. You must write to Verdi at once and ask him what he wants me to sing. Ah, it was good of you to come, my dear. There isn't a singer in the world who wouldn't travel a thousand miles at your bidding, maestro. Well, I can assure you that at one time of my life, madame, I found it difficult to persuade singers to walk a hundred yards. But uh, this time, you know, I ask a favor, not for myself, but for my children. Your children? These old men, you will see. The inmates of my home for aged musicians. You founded it yourself? Yes, because I thought people who had given the world so much pleasure deserved well of the world. It seemed to me that we should at least allow them to end their days in peace. That's a wonderful thought, maestro. But you asked me to sing something from your opera, La Traviata, because one of the original cast was here. Ah, yes, poor fellow. His days are numbered, I am afraid. But it would give him much happiness if you would be good enough to bring back the days of his glory. You have an orchestra here? Mm, a very good one. I conduct it myself. Oh, wonderful. <laughs> Come along, then. <laughs> My friends, uh, Madame Melba, the great Australian soprano, is here to sing for you. And uh, now, madame, while our orchestra is preparing itself, uh, you must come and meet poor Beppo, on whose behalf this concert has been arranged. Is he the one in the wheelchair? Uh, yes. He can no longer walk, but he would crawl on his hands and knees to hear La Traviata. Ah, here you are, old friend. Here is Madame Melba. Uh, she is much better to look at than Salvini Donatella. <laughs> Who was Salvini Donatella? Uh, my original Violetta. And I quite agree with Beppo that she was not to be compared with you in appearance. She was fat and ugly. <laughs> While you are... You are Violetta to the life. Uh, Violetta to the life. Yes, yes, that is so, madame. And we could offer you no greater praise, Beppo and I. I'm so happy that you let me come here to sing for you. Ah, and now I see we are ready to begin. My friends, <laughs> my friends, uh, Madame Melba has chosen her first item especially for Beppo. Oh, Beppo. <laughs> it is, of course, from La Traviata, the pathetic Adio del Fasato.
you taught you to sing my music like that? Paolo Tosti? Ah, dear Tosti, of course. He is the only man alive who could understand. And you are the only woman who could sing that music as he told you. Thank you, Maestro. Uh, but here is Beppo to give you his opinion. And I remind you that he was in the original cast over 40 years ago. Well, Beppo, did you like that? Were you satisfied? Madame, I am an old man, and there is not much time left for me. Would you let me kiss your hand? Of course. And I'm going to give you a kiss, too, because you are the handsomest man I've met in Italy. <laughs> you hear that, Maestro? <laughs> the handsomest man in Italy, she says. <laughs> At 76. Uh, Madame is a good judge, Beppo. Uh, there was a time when all the girls turned in the street to look at you. Uh, they were the great days. The great days. And now, for a few hours, I have become young again. I feel as if I could get up onto the stage and sing. And sing. Beppo! <laughs> He is all right, but the excitement of your coming has just been a little too much for him. Oh. I, I, am, I am all right, madame. Do not go. Stay. Stay with us a little longer. I'll stay, Beppo, and sing as often as you like, just for you. God bless you. Bless you. Have you had a happy day, Nelly? Perfect. If my visit to Milan had started like this, if there hadn't been any nasty letters or unfriendly people, or people who wanted to be too friendly, look, there he is. Who? The young man you're talking about. The one who wanted to be too friendly. He's seen us. He's coming over. Oh, no! Oh, Madame! Quickly, Louis, let's run for right. it. Right. Come on, then. Wait for me. Uh, oh, it's no use, Louis. I'll have to face him. Oh, yes. He's, he's right behind us. Oh, oh you, you were running away from me. Yes, I was. Oh, how could you do such a thing? I have waited here for you all the time. I have not eaten. I have not moved once from my position. And you would have disappointed me. Madame Melba has an important engagement. Nothing could be more important than love. Don't talk such nonsense. Nonsense? Come, Nelly, we'll be late. So where are you going? That doesn't concern you. You are meeting another man. Yes, yes, yes. Now, goodbye. Very well. I shall kill you. And then I shall kill myself. <laughs> I've never been so glad to leave any place as I am to leave Milan. But you've overcome all the opposition now, Nelly. You're a popular favourite. Too popular. <laughs> You're thinking of that idiot Giovanni. Oh, well, he'll soon be just a memory. When do we reach Venice? In an hour's time. And Mr Tosti has promised to be there to meet us. Tosti? And no Giovanni. How wonderful. <laughs> Nelly, you have come at last. Tosti. And the faithful Louis as well. Oh, bravissimo. How do you do, Mr. Tosti? Welcome to Venice. I give you the freedom of the city. Oh, it's so good to see you, Tosti. You don't know what I've been through. Oh, such an ordeal. A triumph unparalleled, they say. Everyone at the La Scala adored the divine Milba. One person liked me too much, or said so at any rate. Nelly, you have a special admirer? Oh, oh, oh. oh, this is good, very good. I knew it would happen. In Italy, you see, we are very romantic. We have the temperament that makes us the great lovers. And when a beautiful woman comes along, a great singer with a famous name, well, well it is only to be expected that love should blossom. Oh, 
stop it, Tosti. You're talking just like Giovanni. Giovanni? That's the name of this young man. We don't know his other name. And I don't want to. Now, Tosti, let's talk about something else. What have you prepared for my entertainment here in Venice? Oh, many things, Zaccare. But first, a great festivity at the home of the Count of Alieri. Oh, it's one of the wealthiest men in Italy. Oh, wait till you meet him, Nelly. You will fall in love with him immediately. I, Tosti, will personally guarantee it. Tosti, what a magnificent house. Who owns it? I have uh, told you, Nelly, the Count de Falieri. And this is just the one of his homes. But where is the Count? He will be here in a moment. He likes to make a dramatic entrance. He will perhaps uh, drop from the ceiling. <laughs> Ladies and the gentlemen, your host, the Count de Falieri. A very good evening to you all. And to you particularly, my dear, dear Madame Melba. Giovanni! You! You are the Count de Falieri! embarrassing moment for the young Australian singer who had come to Venice to avoid the one man who is now her host for the evening. How she coped with this situation will be told in the next fascinating chapter of the Melba story. The Melba story was written by John Ormiston Reed and produced by Dorothy Crawford. The Australian Symphony Orchestra was conducted by Hector Crawford. The role of Melba was spoken by Marcia Hart and sung by the Australian coloratura soprano, Glenda Raymond.